Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech on Dervinthia, one of the new, more powerful decks in Flesh and Blood, classic constructed after the recent Banner Restricted announcement. Um, with the Banner Restricted announcement, Dervinthia um, basically lost her two worst matchups, or at least they decreased in play rate for sure. Um, Dervinthia's worst matchup for sure was Old and her second worst matchup was Icelander. And uh, with the banning of Winter's Whale, as well as the suspension of Hypothermia, which was really bad for Dorinthia, and Amulet of Ice, both of her bad matchups um, that were Ice decks are decreasing in power level. Um, her, her other two bad matchups were Dromai, um, who I also suspect will decrease in power level and play rate because she was mostly there to prey on those two Ice decks I just mentioned. And her fourth bad matchup for Dorinthia is Reinar. Um, and Reinar is not only not that bad for Dorinthia, but also not played very much. So um, all four, those are Dorinthia's only four really bad matchups. And they were basically all decreasing in play rate or not played much, right? So if all of your bad matchups are being kind of underplayed, you're in a pretty good spot. And I think Dorinthia is that deck right now. Um, she has a good matchup into all of the aggro decks in the format. Um, so Phi, Briar, uh, Dash, she has a good matchup into those decks. She has a decent matchup into the Guardian um, of excuse me, of Bravo. Um, not all of them, but her bad matchups um, are still, you know, the same. It's still um, Oldham, Icelander, Dromai, and Reinar. Um, but I don't think they're going to be seen as much. And so in general, I think she's going to be um, in, a, in a good spot. Um, so I want to bring this deck and, and kind of go through it. I really enjoy this deck. I took it to a top eight finish at a local pro quest. Um, I was just having fun this season since I already qualified through ELO. So um, I never just I, like I never won any of my games in top eight because I didn't want to take the um, the PTI from anyone. So uh, I mean, I know there's gold foil, but I don't care that much about the gold foil. So I chose to let my opponents always you know, play through the rest of the top eight for a chance at a PTI. Um, but I'm still happy to get there. And all the stores I go to locally give store credit or cash for top eighting. So I still am happy to get to the top eight there. Um, but I want to go through this deck. It's really, it's really great. It's basically Josh Lau's deck. Um, I will link some of his stuff in the comments or in the description, I should say. Um, he's like basically the best uh, warrior player, Dorinthia player in the world. Um, makes the most content for it. A lot of his content is more long form, um, so hopefully this will be a more condensed version of, uh, of his videos. And if you want some more long form stuff, a little more podcast style, I would recommend his videos for sure with a more in-depth guide. Um, I'm just going to give kind of a quick overview of the deck though. I did pick up uh, eight new cards from Dynasty um, that are in the deck, so a good portion of it. It also has some new cards like Glistening Steelblade here from the Classic Battles product. Um, this default setup is what you're going to be playing into all the aggro decks. You have quite a lot of equipment block, um, I believe nine total, because you have three on Brave Forge Bracers, three on Courage of Blade Hold, two on your helmet, and one on your boots. Um, it's technically only eight block, because usually you're going to activate the ability of Courage of Blade Hold and not block with it for one. Um, but, you know, you can block with it for one if you need to. So you could have potentially nine extra health on your equipment, which is a pretty good, um, what we call fridge, you know, a lot of equipment block there. You also are using Dawnblade here, which is her signature weapon. It's very, very powerful, especially against decks that don't like to block. Um, if this hits, and it's the second time it hit that turn, it gets a plus one counter. So it'll attack for three. If it hits twice, next turn it'll attack for four. If it hits twice then, it'll attack for five, and it just builds up. Um, you're able to block with two cards, and then use two cards to attack with Dawnblade pretty well into aggro decks. They're usually going to choose to not block, and they'll eventually die to your Dawnblade. You don't have to fatigue them or anything. You're just going to get a weapon that's attacking for 10 a turn, and then 12 a turn, and then 14 a turn. And they're just going to die to that or have to block with all their cards. And once they block with all their cards, you get a 4-card hand to start swinging at them with. So um, pretty great. The way you're able to attack with it twice is through your hero ability. If your weapon hits, you can attack with it an additional time, right? Because it only says once per turn. But if you can get it to hit with go again, you'll be able to attack with it a second time. Um, looking at the deck here, we only have three attack actions with Command and Conquer. Um, this is a great card in general. It blocks for three, so it's never bad. Um, if you have a hand that can't go again, you can just throw this out. 
Additionally, if they uh, stop your attack, right, if they block it so you don't get your heal, hero ability, but the weapon had go again, you can still use an action, right? You don't lose your action point um, as long as your weapon had go again. You just lose the ability to attack with the weapon a second time. So you can throw out an attack like Command & Conquer here, or you can um, you know, play a permanent, um, like an energy potion, because you'll still have your action point. You also play this one Pursuit of Knowledge as one of your blues. Um, this is also something you can throw out after. A pretty good on hit, giving you plus one intellect until the end of your turn, and it's at a break point of four damage. Um, one of the new Dynasty cards here, we got Iron Song Pride. Uh, this is really good if you're going second, um, because you can play this as an instant, Give your weapon a plus one counter and then you get to start attacking on on your first turn with a four power weapon so pretty great um, you do have to hit to keep the counter around so it's a little less good on your first turn since you won't be able to guarantee that you hit uh, but it's still not bad we i'm only playing two because of it not blocking um, and we do want to be blocking a lot with this deck so it can be kind of clunky if you draw multiple multiple of these together for that reason i'm only running two um, Iron Song Response is our great zero cost um, reaction. It has Reprise, which is kind of her signature ability, which means the effect only triggers if the opponent has defended with a card from their hand on that chain link. But if they do so, this gives plus three to your weapon attack um, for the cost of zero. The blue gives plus one, but it is a blue three block, which is great. We're playing quite a lot of cards that cost one and pump for three with the bonus effect, so out for blood gives plus three, and then a reprise of an extra plus one on your next attack. Puncture is a new card from Dynasty. It's a one cost reaction that gives plus three, and piercing one, which means if it's defended by an equipment, it has plus one, so kind of a plus four if they're using any equipment block there. Um, our other one cost for plus three is Stroke of Foresight. Uh, this is plus three, and with the reprise of the Sink Below effect, so, um, you draw a card, well, actually, a little different than Sync Blow actually, I think you draw first with this one. So you draw and then you can put a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck. Um, other reactions we're playing, we're playing one route here. This is kind of our below out card. We use this a lot to end the game, um, you know, kind of our killing move. Uh, it gives, for two costs, a little more expensive, it gives plus three as well. But the effect lets you return a card they're blocking with to their hands. So. Um, it can potentially be two for six damage if you return like a three block to their hand, right? Because then you're getting the plus three and then minus three on their blocking. So potentially a two for six there. Uh, it can really be a blowout if they use something like staunch response and then pay into it. So they're putting six resources into blocking and you're able to just return that whole card to their hand. So um, very powerful card. It is expensive, so we're only playing one of it, but it's nice to have. Um, part of what's nice with these one of... Uh, reactions is Singing Steel Blade, uh, one of her specializations that gives your weapon plus one, and then the reprise effect lets you search for uh, a card that's an attack reaction, and then you can play at that chain link. Um, pretty powerful effect to just tutor anything from your deck there. Um, our other specialization here is Steel Blade Supremacy. Um, this is a very, very powerful card that you want to kind of arsenal and use on four or five card hands, ideally. Um, using this on big hands, you want to make sure you can go again. You want to make sure you can use reactions on this turn as well so that you can guarantee it's going to hit. Um, you, you really need to have full support for this card, but it's super powerful when you can get it off. Uh, it gives you weapons plus two for that whole turn. So for every attack you're using with that weapon that turn, it has plus two. And for that whole turn, the weapon has, when it hits, draw a card. So your whole turn, that weapon is getting plus two power, and then when it's hitting, it's drawing a card. So. You do want to make sure it's getting go again. You want to make sure it's um, you know getting over with some reactions, but this can lead to some hugely powerful turns when you get it off. Um, we have a one of to kind of help that. Iron Song Determination costs zero and gives your weapon plus one and dominate until end of turn. So once again, this is for the whole turn. So every time you attack with that weapon this turn, it will have plus one power and dominate. Um, the reason we only one run one of this is by itself it's quite bad. Um, you know this is like your only card. Just gaining, even if you attack twice, that's only plus two damage, which is pretty bad. Uh, it's nice, it's very, very good in combination with Steel Blade Supremacy, um, but that's kind of it. So we just run one of it to use with Steel Blade Supremacy, and uh, in the late game, we can use the Dominate to close out at the very end, but for most of the game, if it's just by itself, not with the Steel Blade Supremacy or ending the game, 
it's pretty medium. Um, now we can kind of look at all of our go again cards. We've got three spoils of ore. Uh, this gives your next attack with your weapon plus two power and go again. It also has the extra effect of when your weapon hits, you get two copper. Um, you don't really ever use those copper. They are nice against Dromai because it will be uh, making the Kyloria steal the copper instead of getting a draw. Um, but you're not going to often use those copper tokens at all. The main thing here is for one cost, you get plus two power and go again. Um, the one cost go again is very good in Dorinthia because it lets you use two card hands. Um, any blue plus a one cost go again and you can attack twice, right? It costs one to attack with Dawnblade, so two total resources to attack with it twice, and then the last resources for go again, right? So let's say we're against an aggro deck, our hand is out for blood and puncture, we're gonna block with both of these for six block, and then we're gonna keep this blue in Spoils of War, play the Spoils of War pitching the blue, and then attack with Dawnblade for five, go again. Since they're an aggro deck, it'll likely hit, um, for five damage and then you can use your last resource to attack for another three if that hits it'll get a counter right um, if they block at any point it might feel like it sucks because you're not getting your counter or if they block for the five you won't get to attack a second time but it's actually not that bad because if an aggro deck is blocking with cards those are less cards they can attack you with um, and that means you'll have to probably block less on the next turn where you can swing for even more so it'll you're kind of happy either way if the aggro deck is blocking or if you're getting your counters. It's, it's a win-win for Dorinthia. Our other going in cards is the very powerful new specialization from um, the battles deck, um, the classic battles. It's a, another one cost go again. Your next Dawnblade attack this turn has go again, but with the really powerful effect of whenever it hits a hero this turn, it gets a plus one counter. So uh, you really want to use this one re with reactions because it doesn't actually give any power to the weapon, but every time it hits, it gets a counter, and those are you know those permanent counters. So if you can get the weapon to hit twice that turn, you're going to get plus two power on the weapon for future turns, which is really really great. Um, this is great, of course, in combination with uh, you know for example Iron Song Response. Off of a blue, you can play Listening Steel Blade, attack with your weapon, use Iron Song Response to make it hit. And then the next attack is going to be for four because you got that counter. Our other go again cards are two of these run throughs. Um, this is a reaction that costs one, gives your sword attack go again, and then your next sword attack gets plus two. Um, the reason we only run two is because it is a yellow, um, and the effect is a little annoying because uh, since it's a reaction, you know if they block it, it's not kind of guaranteed go again. You would much rather it give plus two on that attack itself because then you can make sure it hits and then use the go again. Um, it's one of the weaker go again cards and that's why we're only running two of it. One of the better go again cards into aggro decks is Red Warrior's Valor. This gives your next weapon attack plus three and if it hits, it gains go again. Um, it is conditional, so the weapon does have to hit to gain go again, but since it's gonna be attacking for at least six against aggro decks, they're often not going to block it, so you'll get to hit them for six, and then another three, starting a counter. So nine damage for two cards, this is an in a blue, is quite good. Nine damage for two cards is really good. And, um, you know, being able to threaten the counter off of that is great as well. Running two of them is blue. Um, we just don't have a slot for a third one, and it's just a nice three block. You know, basically all the cards in this deck that are blue, you would ideally use for pitching for three resources or blocking for three. Um, but we try to make it so they're all useful if we need them. Um, basically, the rest of the deck is all blues. Um, we do have three Twinning Blade. This card's really great because often your opponent is going to block with all four cards in their hands once you get counters. So let's say your weapon's at plus two counters and you're attacking for five. They might block for 10, 11, or 12 using their whole hand. Um, they're going to do that because you have to hit to keep your counters. So they'll block with everything to try to stop you from gaining counters and to remove all of the counters from your Dawn Blade. Um, if you can give it go again with any of your go again effects, you can kind of trick them by using Twinning Blade. This lets you attack with an additional time using your sword that turn, kind of activating a free hero ability, um, which is great because they just used all their cards to block and you get to attack again anyways, um, and then still hit them and keep the counters. So it's kind of a blowout card. It's also great on your really big turns with Steel Blade Supremacy. It lets you attack three times with your sword, right? Once the normal attack, the second time using your hero ability, and then the third time using Twinning Blade. So 
really powerful there and definitely a three up for the deck. It's also a three block, um, which you're often going to use it for the three block if it's not helpful on that turn. And then the rest is all blues. Um, I do know Heart of Fjendal is in this deck. This is a pretty expensive Fabled card. Um, if you have it, this is a great deck to play it in. If you don't have it, I totally understand. It's like a $300 card. So I would just switch it for the third Warrior's Valor Blue. Pretty easy to switch there. You're not really going to lose any power from the deck. It's just fun to play with Fabled cards. Um, and it's actually good in this deck. But you can just switch it for the third Blue Warrior's Valor here. The rest of our blues mostly give go again. We have Hit and Run here. This is a zero cost blue three block, and it gives your next weapon attack go again. Precision Press is a new card from Dynasty. It's a blue one cost, gives your next sword or weapon, or your next sword or dagger go again, and piercing one. Um, Glint the Quicksilver is actually a good blue that we're going to play. Most of our blues are just for blocking or pitching most of the time, but um, Glint for zero cost gives your weapon attack go again, but it also, if reprise is triggered, lets you draw a card. So it's kind of a you know, free go again without using any cards. Overpower is a blue that um, later in the game when we have a bunch of blues and we're second cycling can be three costs, so a, a whole blue for it to get plus four total power on your weapon. Um, two from itself and two from reprise. Um, we've got some cute one-ofs in addition. We've got Pummel. Um, Pummel is because we run the one-of Pursuit of Knowledge here that it can target as well as the Command and Conquer. Um, there's a little trick you can do where if you've attacked with your weapon, you can play, let's say you attack with your weapon with go again, right? They block it so you don't trigger Dorinthia, but then you use Command and Conquer with your go again. Um, you can use Singing Steel Blade if they block the Command and Conquer with cards and Reprise is triggered. Um, you can use Singing Steel Blade, you target the weapon attack that's on the chain, so you're going to target the Dawn Blade, but then you can find Pummel from your deck and use it on the Command and Conquer. So kind of a cute little trick there with Singing Steel Blade. The Command and Conquer is not going to gain the plus one, but it will get you to find this pummel. So most of the time it's just the blue, um, but we do have some ways to use it. Um, we have that one Pursuit of Knowledge as well, just a nice blue attack for the deck. We only play the one because it is only a two block. Same reason we're only playing one pummel because it's a two block. Um, and then we play one Steel Blade Shunt. This is kind of a cute way to end the game. Um, if it defends a weapon attack, it deals one damage to the attacking hero. Uh, most of the time, this is just a blue, but uh, if your opponent has a weapon that they can use to attack with and they get down to one life, uh, you can basically have them guaranteed dead because you can you know, use this to deal that one damage without having to attack or anything, and the only way they can stop it is through life gain. So that's the main deck. Let's just take a quick look at the sideboard. Um, we have a bunch of extra Steel Blade Shunts. These are for basically uh, guardians that have big weapons and for um, other Dorinthia players. Anyone that uses weapons that's going to have a lot of power, you're going to want this. Um, it's also for any deck that you're trying to block out, like uh, Rangers, for example. They're not attacking with a weapon, but it is a good blocking card. Um, whenever you bring in the shunts, because they're one cost and you ideally aren't don't want to pitch for them, that's a little inefficient, you're going to bring in Tunic as well. Um, and the game plan is once you have your Tunic counter, You'll use the Tunic to play Steel Blade Shunt, and then it's a, a one card for six block, which is quite good. Um, and it's also dealing a damage if it's a, on a weapon. So on an Anthos, for example, you can use your Tunic counter, block for six, and deal one. It's quite, quite good there. If you need to, of course, you can pitch for them, um, but the best line is to use Tunic. Uh, we do have Null Rune Hood for any of the uh, Wizards, um, or also for uh, like Viscerai, for example. Um, but I don't even think you need it for the rune blades. You'll hopefully kill them before you die to any arcane. We have one Oasis Respite. This is basically just for Kano. One Remembrance. This is for any of the um, longer matchups like Guardian or Mirror Match. Two Energy Potion. This is also for longer matches. Um, you can use these to set up. They're also good against Ice decks where you're going to need some extra blues. And then these Overpowers and Routes. Um, are once again for those decks that uh, are a bit more defensive and you need to get, you know, Overpower gets you plus six on your weapon, which is a ton. And then Route also kind of gets you plus six because it makes them return something to their hand that was blocking. So these two cards are mostly for those decks that block a lot and are really defensive. The main deck is kind of already set up for the aggro decks. You can click the matchup and see, I think the Phi deck, the Phi matchup basically doesn't change at all. Um, yeah, I have one extra route in here, but it doesn't even need to be in here. So the deck is already basically built for aggro. 
you look at Briar, yeah, it's just the default 60 against Briar here. Um, but then if you look at, you know, the Bravo matchup, for example, we go all the way up to 70 cards, running everything except the Energy Potion and the Shunt. You probably should run these two. Um, probably just run everything against Bravo, and you just want to be the more defensive version. Um, the matchups aren't perfect yet. I'll fix these up before I publish the video, but uh, yeah, this deck is great. I definitely recommend it. It's very powerful right now, and um, yeah, it'll it'll definitely win you quite a lot of events. I think it's a well-positioned A tier deck. Um, it is a bit pricey, but that is unfortunately flesh and blood, and it uses a lot of the expensive staples like Crown of Providence, Command and Conquer, and Fiendel Spring Tunic. Um, but and it also has the expensive heart, which, like I said, is not necessary. You can run the Blue Warriors Valor instead. Anyways, that is the deck. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what deck you want to see next time. Uh, thanks for watching.